another episode of the unfiltered opinion on 15 perfumes. Here I talk honestly about designer niche and Arabian perfumes I've reviewed so far. I'll read them and I'll tell you which ones are a pass, a recommendation or full bottle worthy for me. Also there is a ranking in the end so stay tuned until then. Welcome or welcome back, my nickname is Miri. Since I've already made an in-depth review on all of these perfumes, I've linked all those reviews in the description box if you want to find out more and therefore I won't be showing you bottles of these perfumes. Also just a disclaimer, this video isn't meant to offend anyone and my ratings are my ratings alone. Just because some perfume doesn't vibe with me or it doesn't last long on me, it doesn't mean it's a bad perfume, it just means this perfume and I didn't click and that is completely okay because fragrances are subjective and the purpose of this video as I've mentioned isn't to offend but rather to have fun and you know talk about what we have in common and that is passion for perfumes. So let's start. The first perfume is Killian's Angel Share and this is absolutely gorgeous scent. I love the fact that although it has cognac, the scent doesn't have alcoholic vibe, but rather it smells boozy in the most spiced and sweetest addictive way. The opening smells to me like a glass of fine cognac and baked hazelnut pastry with cinnamon. It's so delicious and I really like how the scent develops from darker and deeper woody cognac to lighter and sweeter gourmand notes of something similar to a freshly baked apple pie with lots of cinnamon. In my opinion, this is the most perfect winter perfume in my collection and one of the best perfumes on the market. It's long lasting, I get 10 plus hours of the wear on my skin with great silhouette so yes, I love it with all my heart and if you haven't already guessed, this is a must-have and a full bottle worthy perfume for me and my rating for it is 10 out of 10. Dior Poison Girl Eau de Toilette. Oh, this is such a bright, effervescent and energizing scent because it has a lot of orange and lemon in the opening. And I haven't smelled a frosted orange note in any other perfume. If you did, please let me know what those perfumes are. But that note in Poison Girl Eau de Toilette is brilliant. It makes the opening a bit more sparkling with a frosted chill, but the scent gets warmer, deeper and sweeter as well. The scent of frosted Frosted orange creamsicle melts into a beautiful creamy sweet floral scent that becomes even sweeter in the dry down with caramel syrupiness. It smells like orange cake drizzled with caramel. Even though roses are listed in Poison Girl Eau de Toilette, they are not prominent so even if you hate roses that doesn't mean you will dislike this fragrance. And this is mostly a powdery orange vanilla fragrance that lasts about 4 to 5 hours on my skin because it's an Eau de Toilette but it projected only for the first two hours and then it sat closer to the skin. I prefer this version Eau de Toilette compared to the Eau de Parfum because it's more orangey and it's less sweet. I would absolutely recommend that you check it out if you already haven't because it's sexy and my rating for Poison Girl Eau de Toilette is 7.5 out of 10. BDK Gris Chanel Axta. This is a spicy woody scent with powdery iris and it is just elegant. It's beautiful, it's addictive and it develops from the cardamom infused scent of thick chutney to the smoky scent of carrot seeds and it finishes with the scent of woody vanilla cream, almost like someone mixed pencil shavings in the vanilla cream. It's intoxicating, it's so sensual and it evokes the darker grey color that matches its juice but the overall vibe this scent gives you is that of a rainy 
day when the warmth of the air mixes with an earth-like scent into a beautiful, woody, sweet, buttery, spicy concoction. To me, this is about 90% similar to the original Grisha Null, but it lacks Tai Chi Latte vibe together with milkiness and a slight coconut reminiscent scent you can smell in Grisha Null Eau de Parfum. So the original is slightly bit better in my opinion. I like that milkiness and coconutiness, but extra lasts longer. I get about nine hours of the wear, although projection is very subtle. In the description box, I've linked the comparison between Gris Chanel Eau de Parfum and Gris Chanel Extra, so check it out after you finish watching this video. And I would recommend Gris Chanel Extra if you want a smokier, woodier and more grown-up version of the Eau de Parfum. My rating for this perfume is 8 out of 10. Kayali Velvet Santal 35. Although this perfume is marketed towards men, it is completely unisex. And the overall vibe of this scent is velvety just like the name suggests and in the opening you got like a creamy woody scent with hints of jasmine velvetiness and thief freshness and greenness it almost smells to my nose like dried lavender bouquet Velvet Santal becomes muskier and woodier with bits of spicy, smoky aspects in the dry down, reminiscent of the tiger balm scent, but in the most sophisticated, relaxing, spa, spicy, herbal, woody way with some sweet, creamy, almost milky nuances. And as you've noticed, this won't be everyone's cup of tea, but I do appreciate it because it's a more unique fragrance and it has a sophisticated grown-up vibe. I really do like its scent, but performance is horrible. <laughs> it lasts about three to four hours on my skin and the projection is low and very, very intimate. So this is a pass for me and my rating for Velvet Santal 35 is six out of 10. Lancome La Nuit Trésor Flot de Nuit. This flanker in La Nuit Trésor line is relatively new. It was launched in 2023 and what is different compared to other La Nuit Trésor perfumes is that it has added notes of macchiato and whipped cream. It has a floral opening that quickly becomes a very creamy, sweet coffee vanilla scent but with some smokiness you also get in the original La Nuit Trésor. Fleur de Nuit smells to me like lovers went to a midnight stroll in the garden and then they decided to drink some coffee and eat a Chantilly cream dessert. Because it has coffee, some compare Fleur de Nuit with Yves Saint Laurent's Black Opium and I feel that just because Black Opium receives a lot of negativity in the fragrance community, that negativity is now directed to Fleur de Nuit as well. Yes, this is a generic perfume, it's not mind-blowing, but it is still a very pretty perfume, very likable and very seductive. It is a floral whipped cream coffee scent that has a luring and mysterious side and it lasts about 6 hours on my skin. If you want a perfume that is a mix between the original La Nuit Trésor and Yves Saint Laurent Black Opium, this is it. Check it out. I would recommend it and my rating for its scent profile and performance is 7 out of 10. Givenchy L'Intadit Intense. Don't be scared to try this one out just because it comes in a dark black bottle and because it has pepper in the notes. Because the scent is just intoxicating and in my opinion it's very underrated because most people go crazy about its rouge sister. I got a prominent fresh orange blossom with spices and creaminess in the opening and to my biggest surprise this doesn't smell too peppery at all or stingy. No, it's beautifully blended and it smells like orange blossom petals are seasoned with a blend of lemon and black pepper but in the smoothest, semi-sweet and creamiest way. And very soon vanilla kicks in and smoothens and sweetens 
this fragrance out while well, patchouli and vetiver are here but only in the background and I love that nutty component from the sesame it has nutty spicy cereal facets so overall Linta de Tintans smells like spiced floral petals in the vanilla rice. Oh, it's just good. It lasts from six to eight hours on my skin with moderate production and this is full bottle worthy for me. I would rate it with nine out of ten. Azdav Amirat Al Arab Privé Rose. The name translates as Arabian Princess and it features a rose as the star of this perfume. Truth be told, the scent is artificial and you don't get a real strawberry scent, especially since the opening is loud, sour and pungent, but it has a sweet powderiness that balances it out. The opening smells like the scent of strawberry powder floating and hovering in the air around the fresh pink roses but you also get some greenness in the scent probably from the note of green apple. For most of the wear this smells like a mix of vibrant rose bouquet and baby powder. It smells pinkish, it's a very feminine powdery musky rose with sourness and greenness of green apple. The scent is very potent, it lasts about five to six hours but the projection is so strong. If you decide to purchase it, be aware that you must let it mature and settle down. After some time the scent does get better and if you're okay with a bit of synthetic notes then yes I recommend that you check it out and my rating for Amirat Al Arab Privé Rose is 7.5 out of 10. Narciso Rodriguez Narciso Umbra. This is a very creamy, fluffy, sweet, lightweight floral scent that smells like you're putting tropical fruity vanilla mousse on your skin. The opening leads you to tropical islands and it gives summer vibes because of frangipani and ylang ylang that add such a tropical feel. But this isn't a typical beach type of fragrance because it has powdery musk and woody notes in the base. I also get like a tiny bit of salty accord on my skin. So it smells like lightly tanned skin sprinkled with salty sea drops. And to be completely honest, yes, I like ombre, but I'm far from being wowed by it. It's not tropical enough to be a must-have summer vacation perfume and it's not musky, woody or powdery enough to be on the same wow factor level as rouge and poudre are in my opinion. My friend has ombre and she received a lot of compliments while wearing ombre but on my skin it just doesn't project. It is a very soft fragrance. I got about four hours of the wear so if I consider the performance and no wow factor in the sun profile this is a pass for me and my overall rating is 6.5 out of 10. If Saint Laurent Lieb Eau de Parfum. I didn't know this, but after more than 1,500 trials, a final concoction under the name Boish was made into today's Lieb Eau de Parfum. The original code name Boish was appropriate because the initial idea was to take Fuja, a classic male fragrance with a prominent aromatic lavender and blended with lush feminine scent of orange blossom. Awesome. And that is exactly the scent you get in Lieb Eau de Parfum. It opens with fresh sparkliness of aromatic minty lavender and petit grain with a sweet orangey floral aroma and as it dries down florals and musk become more prominent. This is the scent of a fresh luminous bouquet of white flowers and next to it is a glass of orange juice. It never becomes too sweet and it has pretty good performance. It lasts about six to seven hours on my skin while it projects for the first two maybe three hours and then it becomes softer. So if you're looking for an orangey jasmine with a lot of lavender that is very fresh, that feels bossy and confident, yes, check it out. This is recommendation worthy and my overall rating for Lieb Eau de Parfum is 7.5 
out of 10. Rosendo number 5 Floral Amber Sensual Musk. This perfume and Yves Saint Laurent Baby Cat are extremely popular amber vanilla fragrances and with a reason. Rosendo Mathieu number 5 has a spicy, musky floral opening, but that combination somehow creates like a synthetic, latexy, rubbery scent that is most similar, in my opinion, to the scent of perfumed Barbie doll. The opening kind of verges on unpleasant, but it still remains very, very intoxicating. There's something just so addictive in number five that you can't stop smelling your arm, but the opening won't be everyone's cup of tea, although the dry down is amazing amazing. The dry down smells like a bitter vanilla butter cake with some resins and rubbery Barbie doll scent. This is a perfume men love and it has excellent performance. One spray lasts about seven hours on my skin. It projects so I do think this perfume is worth checking out and I'm constantly overthinking do I want it or I don't want it and I'm still thinking do I want to have this in my collection, but it is recommendation worthy. Although it's not a safe blind buy, first test it out and then decide for yourself. My rating for its and profile and performance is 8.5 out of 10. Givenchy Irresistible Rose Velvet. Velvet Rose is a rose water type of perfume with woody, musky, fruity nuances. It's not too powdery, it's not too sweet, it's not too fruity, and it's not too patchouli prominent. In the opening, you get like a fruity sweetness and a mix of slightly sour black currant with fresh roses and like a hint of peppery spiciness. In the heart, I still got the sweet fruity scent lingering, but the rose becomes the star of the show. And although it's combined with iris, this isn't a powdery rose type of scent on my skin. It smells like you're having a rose water bubble bath. It is a very simple perfume that fits the textbook definition of safe and because it's so overplayed I don't find like it's necessary in my collection and a must-have for me but because it smells so familiar yes I do think you will get compliments with it. I get about four hours of longevity with moderate projection so performance is also a reason why this isn't a must-have for me. So it as a pass and my rating is 6.5 out of 10. Swiss Arabian Royal Mystery. This perfume is known as a dupe for Joan Malone's English Pear and Freesia and I made a comparison between these two perfumes so I've linked that video in the description box and you can always check it out after you finish watching this video to see how similar are they and which one is better. Mostly in Royal Mystery you got a fruity opening with pear and melon that smells like Midori, the Japanese melon liqueur with candy-like sweetness. The heart is more floral but that slightly boozy vibe from the opening continues during the entire wear of this fragrance. Royal Mystery gives you a great contrast between sweet, sparkling, fizzy fruity rose and the balsamic warmth of the darker base notes. It mixes the scent of baked pears with a rose scent and patchouli smell from the garden and then some boozy fizzy liqueur quality. The longevity is moderate. I get about five to six hours of the wear on my skin and if you're looking for a cheaper alternative to Jo Malone's English Pear and Freesia with some characteristics of Armani C then check out Royal Mystery. It is recommendation worthy and and my rating is 7 out of 10. Prada Paradox. Like you're aware already, this is such a loved fragrance and with a reason because it smells good. In the opening you got like a combination of fruity pear and zesty bergamot on top of orangey neroli. The opening does have some bubblegummy facets but I would describe it as the scent of Fanta bubbles. It's just joyful, it's bright and it develops into a mesmerizing mix of white florals with a sweet vanillic flavor and slightly 
bitter green citrusy hues of neroli that smells like you're drinking Fanta with a few extra sugar cubes in the white floral garden. Paradox isn't groundbreaking fragrance, it smells familiar like a combination of a lot of different popular perfumes but it just works out and it will get you a ton of compliments. This perfume passed the overnight test, it projects, it lasts on me, so yes this is full bottle worthy fragrance for me and my rating is 9 out of 10. Ormond Jane Tanger in my opinion, this is such an underrated fragrance not many talk about and it's beautiful, bright and vibrant scent that transports you to the Moroccan city of Tanger in the north of Africa. It opens with the scent of fresh mandarins in the sweet but spiced custard. And in the mid and the dry down, you get a mix of neroli with citruses, woody notes and honey-like vanilla that creates the scent of a creamy custard with candied oranges on the driftwood plate. The scent is an amazing choice for summer but you could wear it even in the spring and autumn because it gives you like a surge of positive energy. The only negative point and the reason why this is not full bottle worthy for me is because I go nose blind to it but scent wise it's intoxicating. It lasted 8 plus hours on clothes with motor projection. Therefore I would absolutely recommend it especially if you don't go nose blind to it and my rating for its and profile and performance is 7 out of 10. And finally Lancome La Vie Belle Eau de Parfum. This perfume is extremely popular and it's known for its powdery iris and extremely sweet sugary praline note. It opens with the scent of caramelized pear but from the start you can smell powdery iris so you get a scent of powdered sugar coated pear. In the heart and the base, La Via Belle loses its fruity side and becomes a more floral and extremely sweet fragrance with hints of minty like deep patchouli. Don't think La Via Belle just because it's a floral fragrance is the scent of a floral field blooming in the spring, no. Rather you get the scent of sugared, candied, crystal, textured flowers. I can see why everyone won't enjoy it because it might be too sweet for some and it's overused at this point. Personally I can't wear it either but my mom loves it so yes I have pleasant memories with this scent and performance is just amazing. It lasts about 7 hours with really strong projection and silage so you don't need to overspray and even though this is nothing new I still think that La Via Belle is recommended worthy because it will get you compliments. So my rating for its end profile and performance is 8 out of 10. And we've made it! Those were short but detailed reviews on 15 perfumes but now what's left is to rank them. Since the ratings I gave them were a combination of the scent profile and performance, perfumes that of course have better performance will have higher score. So here goes the ranking. On the 8th place is Velvet Santal 35. On the 7th place is Rose Velvet and Narciso Rodriguez Narciso Ambre. On the 6th place is Ormond Jane Tanger with Swiss Arabian Royal Mystery and Lancôme's La Nuit Trezo Flo de Nuit. On the 5th place is Yves Saint Laurent Lib Eau de Parfum, Dior's Poison Girl Eau de Toilette and Azdav's Amirat Al Arab Privé Rose. The fourth place is also shared by Lancôme's La Vie Belle Eau de Parfum and Gris Chanel Extra by BDK. And now we're reaching the first three places. The third place goes to Rosendo Mathieu number no. 5. The second place is shared by Prada Paradox and Givenchy Lintadit Intense. And the first place goes to... Killian Angels Share. Three perfumes I absolutely love are of course Killian's Angel Share, Prada Paradox and Givenchy Lintadit Intense but the other two perfumes from this list I absolutely like just based on the scent profile regardless of the performance are Dior 
Poison Girl Udo Toilette and Ormond Jane Tanger. These perfumes would be my top 5 fragrances out of all perfumes mentioned in this video. Which ones have you tried and which ones are your favorite? Let me know in the comments and also if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe that way you're becoming a part of our fragrance community and don't forget to check out in-depth reviews of the perfumes mentioned in this list in the description box and if you want to see a previous fifth episode of this unfiltered videos series then click here i will see you there bye